Okay kiddos, today we're going to do our art project for Art Week 2021. And the first thing that you're going to do is you're going to get your paper. And we're going to be doing what's called a relief, a low and high relief sculpture out of paper. So what you're going to do first is you're going to get your paper and it's going to feel sad, but you're going to go ahead and you're going to crumple up your paper. And it's kind of hard because this is really good paper. It's super thick. It's called a mixed media paper, which means you can put lots of different things onto this paper. And you can kind of go back and re-crumple it like this because you're going to want to get some good, big wrinkles in there. Nice, big wrinkles. So you can do that if you want. You can even give it a little twist if you want to, but it, it might tear a little bit, so you should be careful with that. And then once you've got that, you're going to fold it back out. You can see that mine tore just a little bit, but that's going to be okay. And then you're going to take your black paper so that you can kind of see what you're doing a little bit better. You're going to slide that underneath there. And what you're going to start doing is you're going to be starting to create some creases and folds into your paper to make it kind of three-dimensional. You know, I, since I got that tear, I'm going to fold that up a little bit. And you're going to flatten some of them, but not all of them. And you can even kind of fold the edges under if you want to. Like that. Maybe a little bit like that. Fold it a little bit more. And I definitely want to fold that a little bit more. So my rectangular piece of paper is no longer going to be rectangular anymore. And then once you kind of got that shape sort of kind of figured out, it doesn't have to represent anything because this is what we call abstract art. And abstract art kind of takes its root from, oh, probably about the 1930s and 40s and 50s when um, artists started deciding that they didn't have to make their paintings necessarily look exactly like something, but it could represent things instead or their sculptures could just represent a feeling or a time and a place that that artist might be feeling at that moment. Um, so what you're going to do is you're going to take glue, and I used quite a bit there, but um, I'm also using a little bit less glue than what you're going to get. You're going to get to use tacky glue because it dries faster and will be able to um, keep your paper attached to the black paper because your next thing is to glue it down to the black paper. Okay. And it will take it a little bit to stick, so you're going to have to be patient with it. You might have to put your hands on it and just kind of let it stay there for a little bit. And the more that it can get glued down, the better. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to switch and use one that I've already kind of mashed down. So yours are going to take a little while longer to glue and dry. So you'll probably want to step away from that for a little bit. And then what I'm going to do is use another one to show you the next step of what we're going to do. Because the next step takes the longest, but it turns it makes it pretty, pretty amazing. So your paper needs to make sure you need to make sure that it stays glued to the black paper. It needs to stay glued to that. So that's what I'm telling you. You need to probably press down a little bit more. And while it's doing that, you can kind of refold some of those 
wrinkles or create some new ones maybe if you wanted to. And again, it's pretty tough paper. So, um, like I have this tear right here. You can pretty much get that to glue down. That would be the best you can do. Then I might need to go in here with some glue here and kind of put a little bit like here because I might want to glue this one back a little bit. And I might want to tear that one edge a little bit more so I can get a kind of a cool fold right there. And then I can have that one also be its own fold. So this is my little paper guy um, and I'll show you him later, probably after you're done with your video. Um, I'll put him back up here so you can see what he looks like when he's all done. But I want to move on to the next step so that you can see what you're going to be doing. Okay, so once you've gotten your paper glued to the back, the black background, that was hard to say. Um, you can see that I still have some, still have some ridges that have popped up and I'll probably go back in there and glue that down um, just to make sure that it's attached to the black piece of paper. Um, but for right now, I think we'll go ahead and get started on the next part of this low relief paper sculpture. So the next step that you're going to do is you're going to get your paintbrush. And I'm going to be using a flat paintbrush today, as we've already talked about. And I'm going to go in here and I'm going to use my white with just a little bit of gray in it because I did have some black in my paintbrush and now it's there, which is fine. And I'm going to paint everything white. especially the top ridges of the paper. And you're gonna to wanna to make sure you get some in, kind of in the crevices as well. So the reason this is called a low relief is because it doesn't become three dimensional very much more than what is sticking up off of the base, which is the black paper. Um, long ago, the Greeks used low relief to um, share stories of their history. The Egyptians did as well, but today we're doing this abstract art. So we're not going to be telling a story with it, but you could possibly uh, look for shapes or things like that that you'll see in within the paper. But what we're doing is making an abstract piece of sculpture, mostly for the experience of getting to try something that you normally wouldn't do. And sometimes artists do that just to get the experience of trying something new. It doesn't have to necessarily be something. It doesn't have to be a picture. It could be just lots of just shapes. And this is what we call kind of a free form shape because it doesn't have any specific um, like triangles or circles or anything like that to it. It has more of what we call morphic shapes because it changes, morph. So after you've gotten your white on there, and it's really hard to see, I know, because I'm doing white on white, you're gonna start getting a little bit of black onto your paintbrush, okay? You do not need a ton of black, if that makes sense, because black will cover lots of space okay so i'm going to get just a little bit of black here i'm going to show you my palette i'm going to ignore all those little black marks because i was wiping off black out of the brush 
So what you're going to do then is you're going to go to where it's darker, where there might be shadows on your sculpture. Like you can see here, I have this really super cool wrinkle right here. So I'm going to get a little more dark and I'm going to go up underneath there to give it a lot more shadow. And you're going to actually have to maybe even kind of go up underneath the ridge to get that to cover. Then as you go out, you blend it in with the white that you've already put on there. Okay. Now you don't want to do too much because if you do too much, you'll end up with more black than what you want. And the white won't be able to cover it up. So you can see I'm kind of blending that in there, right in here. And I definitely want to leave this part darker because it's literally almost like a cave in the paper. So I might even want to add a little more dark to that. So what we're doing here is we're using tints and shades because where tint has to do with adding white to something and shade has something to do, it has to do with adding black to something. Okay. So you can kind of see here, I have another little ridge here. I'm going to use that black and I'm going to spread it out quite a bit. And I, the way I can do it is because I've already got that white on there. So it's easy to blend it in. If you need to add a little more white, you can go back and do that. It just starts to get a little bit sloppy if you do too much of that. So if you do need to do it, you might want to take a moment and wipe off your brush so that you can get rid of some of that extra black. Okay. So you might want to just take a moment, wipe that off, get a little more white, and go back after it. Now that one I'm okay with being kind of grayish, this particular part, and I might even make some of this kind of gray. see I, I think I missed this spot right here but that's okay so you can see that it now looks super 3d and um, you can kind of see down in here that I've got those darker areas maybe this would almost be like the surface of Mars I don't know so the final thing when you're finished is of course to put your name, your signature, your artist signature on there. Um, 
you're going to definitely want to use a white colored pencil to do that and you'll just put your name on the bottom right corner of what you want it to do. If you want yours to hang differently or to be seen this way, you can do that. But you'll put it at the bottom right, kind of like that actually, the bottom right hand corner of whatever direction you want yours to be displayed. But this actually kind of turned out cool. Um, let me show you another one that I did. Also made this one. He's kind of cool. He's got a kind of a neat curly cue to him. Almost like a rose right now. But again, that one, this page actually tore in a couple of places. So that turned out okay because I just stuck it back up in there and didn't worry about it. And this one, there's a right here with that rose piece. That piece is torn as well. And that's okay, but I left it sticking up so that it would definitely look three-dimensional. And you can see that down in there I painted a dark color so that when you step up to it, you can actually see shadows and light wherever you look. So I hope you have fun with this, guys. It's something different and something new that you may not have ever done before. So uh, again, I hope you enjoy it. Don't forget to rinse your brush out when you're done. And um, thank your PTO for paying for all of your supplies and things because they worked really hard to make sure that you could enjoy something different this year. So you can take a look at these. I'll have them up out in the hallway with yours as you go so you can see what they look like up close in person. And again, thanks for doing art with me today.